Good morning, everybody. I've always found that if you want to be successful in your career, then you need to surround yourself with smart, talented, creative people who know more than you do. So apparently that's also the key to success with the panel. So here are the smart, talented, creative people that know more than I do. Uh, but before we get to them, um, I just, you may have already heard, I wanted to let you know that OCLC right before this conference announced um, a new award that we are offering to public libraries only. Uh, it's the Community Engagement Award. Uh, and just as we um, have spent many, many years working with pub public libraries, we have been amazed and astounded as we see some of the creativity that is happening among public libraries and we wanted to do something to recognize that work. Uh, so if you are interested in learning more, you can go and look on the OCLC website. Uh, you could stop by our booth, which is also focused on community and community engagement. Uh, and is way more about you than it is about them. Um, and the most important piece to know is that the folk who win uh, the, I think there's three awards that we'll be awarding at ALA, they each um, are worth $5,000 to the library so that you can do even more community engagement. So uh, if there's a program that you want to highlight, um, please enter that award or pass the news along when you get home. Uh, and here's our smart, creative, talented people. Um, they are each going to tell you a little bit more about themselves when we start. Um, and just to keep you confused, they are sitting in a different order in the panel than they are on the slide. Uh, but we have um, over to the, my far right, Stacey Ledden from Anything Libraries uh, in Colorado. And you may have seen her dancing around PLA <laughs> with her compadres as part of the Any Bubbler Town Hall extravaganza. Um, and then next to her, we have Amanda Donovan, who's Director of Marketing and Communications at Spokane Public Library in Washington. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Jim Staley from Mid-Continent Public Library in Missouri. Uh, I'm gonna just tell you now, I'm not really sure why I'm here. Uh, we, went, we went to dinner the other night. I think uh, I asked maybe one or two questions and then the conversation just took off. So if that happens again, don't be surprised if I just get up and leave and go get another <laughs> cup of coffee. Um, all that said, um, I want to say thank you for coming. Uh, our focus this morning is really on the importance of getting buy-in for marketing or community relations initiatives in your library. So before we start, can I just ask how many of you have some responsibility for marketing or communications at your library? Good number of you. How many of you are directors? And that's not a mutually exclusive group. Okay, great. Um, so I hope that you will all take something away uh, with you after today. And without further ado, I'm going to come talk to our panel. Um, so I'm just going to start. I introduced our panel, and I'm just going to now have each one of them tell you just a little bit more about their role at their libraries and um, how they, what their responsibilities are for marketing. And they are also responsible for many other things. And I'm actually going to have Stacy start. Yeah. Thanks for being here this morning. It's good to see all of you. Um, so I'm Stacey Ledden. I am the new Director of Strategic Partnerships. This is actually a new role for me in the last couple weeks. Um, previous to that, I was Director of Innovations and Brand Strategy. So our team is responsible for marketing, PR, web, social media, public art, special events, um, and supporting the foundation. We, um, I've been with Anything for 11 years. I started as a content editor there and have um, evolved along with the organization through our rebrand and um, all of the uh, journeys we've been on. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary last year as Anything. So, um, very happy to be here. Thanks, Stacy. I'm Amanda Donovan. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications at Spokane Public Library. I've been there for three years. I'm not a library. I'm a library fan, but I'm, I don't come from libraries. Uh, I was working in financial services, 100 marketing in New York City. Uh, when I saw this job, we were relocating to Spokane for my husband's job, and I saw this job and I said, I know I want that job. That job is perfect for me because of my background and I know what I can bring to uh, the library profession and marketing. Um, we have a, a system of six libraries right now. We're undergoing $77 million of capital bond. 
uh, renovations, so it will ultimately be seven libraries, so we're really in a, a state of growth and transition right now, so not only am I marketing our existing uh, programs and, and collection, but also making sure that we're getting the message about, about where, where we're going as a library. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jim Staley. Uh, I'm at Mid-Continent Public Library, which is um, part of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, we cover part of the city, all of the suburbs on the Missouri side anyway, and then way out into the countryside. So we serve about 815,000 people in our district, um, and we cover three counties. I have been at the library for 13 years. Um, I was one of, let's see, there were one and a half of us when we started the marketing department. I was the one um, of the one and a half. And we've grown uh, kind of from there. My current role, um, it's community relations and planning. Uh, we've added the strategic planning side, which is more related to marketing, I think, than a lot of people realize. And then on the other side of that, um, the community relations has added a lot of government relations. We have 56 cities and 21 school districts in our library district. So partnership um, and collaboration is something we have to do for nearly everything uh, that we take on. And so that's what we've added. Great. Now one of the conversations that we have been having is sort of when people say marketing, people will think many different things. Um, so as marketers, we may think very different things, but also some of the people that you come across in your communities or in your libraries may also have different associations. So can you share a little bit about like what marketing means to you and then maybe what it means to some of your colleagues in the library? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, really, with our marketing and the way we think about marketing is helping people fall in love with the library. I mean, that's, that's a huge part of it. We're telling our story, it's all about storytelling, but essentially we were, we're really trying to use this as a tool to create an emotional connection with the library so that they understand that it's essential to their lives and that we're on their side. Um, so that, that's really how we kind of talk about marketing and um, at any thanks. Mine is similar. Mm -hmm. So uh, at our organization, many of us, most of us have our own personal mission statements. Uh, rather than like a value prop or something like that. We have mission statements and mine, my personal mission sta statement is to drive Spokane forward by inspiring community love of the library. Mm -hmm. So same sort of thing, getting messages to the, to the right people, messages that speak to you directly about why, why the library is important and why Spokane is a great city. And you were saying at dinner that there's a real energy in Spokane, not just at the library and the growth of the library, but in the community as a whole. Yeah, so if you don't know where Spokane is, Spokane is about 300 miles to the east of Seattle. It's very different from Seattle. It's very close to the Idaho border. Uh, it's a beautiful city located on a river, uh, and we're really just poised for a lot of growth right now. Uh, and so I also feel like the library is a huge part of that, and it's I, I know that it sounds self-important, but it's because of the size of our city that I really feel like we're poised to really help drive our city forward um, for community engagement and, and arts and culture, and um, our downtown central library is located um, with the best view of the falls in the city, and so um, we just really see ourselves as a catalyst and a part of that transition and change, and marketing is a huge part of that, and communications and communicating that out. It's great. Yeah, and I, I think, um, <clears throat> Fortunately, I really do believe um, what people think about marketing in the library world has changed over the years. Um, when I got to Mid-Continent, and then I would go to a panel with other folks you know, around library land, everybody was worried about you know, what kind of flyers we were making and what, kind of, you know, <clears throat> what the email message looks like. I think the fortunate thing, uh, in my view, is that We've really come a long way towards believing the promises we make and the, how we deliver on those promises are all part of marketing. And we've got to be sure that we're actually providing the right service. And that's part of what our marketing team works on. And we've been able to sort of work into some of the other pieces of the library. And um, the fact that our job is to be a voice for the customer a lot of the time, that, that has been well received. And that's part of this whole, the whole thing around buy-in. Um, it really requires 
uh, the rest of the library system to start to buy into that and agree mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, and I think we had been talking about that eventually marketing, instead of being, as you mentioned it, it's sort of like a separate activity to print, whether it's flyers mm -hmm. or websites or send out messages, uh, but it's really about being part of the experience of the library. And that's even more true now with public libraries and anything takes that to a whole new level where sort of marketing really, everybody in the library is, market, is part of the marketing, moving the library forward. Absolutely. We, so we um, consider ourselves an experience library. We follow an experience model, which means that everything that we do is focused on the customer experience. And so um, the way that we communicate that is, and the way that we think about marketing is that um, the way that our books are displayed, um, the language that our staff uses when people come in and they greet you, uh, we have our own vernacular at anything. <laughs> and, and one thing we're very proud of is no matter if you're talking to the director or you're talking with front, frontline staff, we're using the same mat, um, language. And so this, this idea of the library as an experience is reinforced through everything, the way our spaces are designed, um, the, the interactions you have on social media with us. Um, and uh, all of this is reinforcing our story and who we are and our why and helping us to build uh, stronger connections with our community. Mm -hmm. And I wanna say that we're working toward that direction as well because as consumers, we're so used to that sort of experience in anything we're interacting right. with. So if you go into Best Buy mm -hmm. or Barnes and Noble or anything, you have that experience and we should be able to replicate that in libraries because that's what consumers expect now and in order to compete in the environment that we're in. We have to provide that to yeah. the community. Absolutely. So Jim had mentioned uh, the idea of getting buy-in, and each of you are at sort of different phases of the whole buy-in process for marketing, uh, community relations, all of that. But if you sort of cast your minds back, um, why? For you, um, and also for some of the people in the audience, why is buy-in so important? And who, who needs to buy in? Well, um, you need a champion. Um, you directors in the room, um, <laughs> you're a great champion. Um, and I think, but it, it doesn't have to be the director. Um, but you need, you know, when you're a starting a marketing department, you need somebody um, at that leadership level whether it's a really passionate board member um, or a library director, or maybe somebody else on the leadership team who says, you know, this is important. This is important and I'm going, to I'm going to advocate for this group or this person on behalf um, of our customers. And um, that person needs to have, you know, the respect of the rest of the organization um, to kind of help build that bridge and build the idea that marketing is, it really is vital for the organization. Yeah. We're stronger together, you know? I mean, and every single one of, the, we've, we were talking about this the other night, like every single person who works at that organization is a marketer in some way, right? So the people that are coming in and, and we're helping every day. When we, you go to the grocery store, you got an anything shirt on, you go to the dentist, you know? Like we, we hear these stories all the time. Well, I have a branch manager who was talking about, you know, she was wearing her anything shirt and the dentist like in her mouth. And she's like, wait a second, you work at anything? She couldn't even like respond, you know? But like, uh, right. <laughs> Um, so uh, it, it is really critical to ha ensure that everybody um, understands their role in that way. Um, it makes us stronger when we're working together. Um, the collaborations that we do, whether that's pr pr promoting an event um, or um, rolling out a new service, we have to have that understanding together of, of how we share our story and how we market this um, because um, Again, we're stronger together, yeah. more effective. I would say that ideally the buy-in from the first person should be in the leadership team. Mm -hmm. So if it's, the, if it's the director or someone in the leadership team, um, I was really lucky to come in at a time where the marketing and communications and marketing strategy was baked into our vision. Um, and they were, uh, you know, my leader, 
my director's in the audience, so I'm not just trying to flatter him. <laughs> but, but, uh, but you know, they really saw the, the vision and the need for this. And then as far as getting buy-in from the rest of your organization, though, I think starting to, to really understand what their individual goals are, or maybe a certain branch or a certain leader in a certain region, what their goals are, and, and help show how you can add value to that. Um, and help make and make those goals your goals. And that's how you're going to build buy-in with your organization as well. Mm-hmm. Can I? I would like to add to. We we had a unique situation in that we were completely reinventing our library system ten years ago. So everything was changing. Right, our our buildings, our our com- complete philosophy, our approach to library service, when we were very much an underdog. And so because this was all happening at the same time, it really was about getting everybody on board and and understanding the why and believing in this thing and having that fire in the belly, let's do this together. Um, I think the challenge now, 10 years later, for folks, we have a ton of new, brilliant staff, but um, having that same kind of why and being able to convey that with new folks coming on board and um, there, it's constant communication and constant reinforcement and you can never take that for granted, um, relaying that story, the why behind it and, and their individual roles too. So um, I think that's one of the challenges and also an exciting thing too. You know. So if you were in a situation, I want to ask Jim, if you were in a situation you for whatever reason, decided to leave Mid-Continent. Mm-hmm. And you went to a new library where there was no real marketing department. What, what, how would you get buy-in from the leadership at that library? What kinds of things would you say? What kinds of tools would you use? Not to put you on the spot or anything, because <laughs> this question that's, is not on the list. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. That's, mm-hmm. that's a terrifying thing to do over again. But um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think I, I would go back to the way kind of this, this buy-in happened from the beginning, and that's just to show, you can show small successes over time. Um, because really what you have to do to win people over um, is show them that what your, you know, what you as the marketer are saying needs to be done works. And so you get a little bit, and you get a win. And when they see the win, um, they're a little more open to the next thing. I mean, I think that's the way you do a lot of things. Right. Yeah. Um, but that, um, you know, it took, uh, you know, our library system, as I said, um, is pretty big. We have 32 branches. You know, it, it took a long time, actually, um, in the way I would consider it to be a long time. It's probably three or four years before we had what I would consider to be the level of buy-in that we really needed um, at, yeah, at every branch. We, mm-hmm. we even had, you know, system level buy-in, but it, it took a while to get, you know, and that was visiting, that's a lot of personal relationships. Um, yeah, I don't, any, anything either one of you want to add? Um, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love that last point, I mean, that, that face-to-face time, like, and honestly, you know, this is something you learn and you grow, you, you never have this nailed down, this, this, the buy-in, the, the, the communication um, between departments, between, you know, administration and staff, but, um, you know, that constant being able to um, come out, meet face-to-face, again, talk with, about the why, talk about, you know, we, we're in support services and we take that role really seriously, um, and we talk about staff being our customers as much as the um, folks who we serve, and, and letting them know we're here to support you in your success, having those kinds of conversations in a very authentic way, you know, like, because you could say that and it could sound like a bunch of BS, right? But um, to be authentic, to ask questions, to, to talk about how we might be able to push some of this stuff forward together, I think. Yeah, just really making it clear that your, your goals are shared goals. Right. We all want the same successes. Yep. Jim, you mentioned the idea of, you know, get a win and share it. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have some examples of specific wins that really help people think, wow, yes, this really is important? So I think back to one very specific um, moment or kind of early on, um, which isn't, you know, it's a very small thing in one way. Um, We had a really, we had a great logo, but a terrible logo at the same time. Um, It had been hand drawn years before. And 
we needed it to be updated so we could use it. Um, so, uh, I mean, this, this was the very early days. Um, and so, you know, when you say to somebody, we're, we're working on redoing the logo, like that's a whole thing. And we said, no, 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 we're not really changing it, we're just updating it. Um, and so we actually got a little pushback at the board level just to make any change whatsoever. Um, and so we, we sat all the board members down in a room and we had both logos, the old one and the new one, which were the same one really, um, on a piece of paper and had them hold it up out here and then look at their neighbors and say, which one can you read? And like all their light bulbs went off and they were like, oh, oh yeah, okay. And then we never had to we never had to do that again, you know. If we wanted to make a change, a decision, there was no there was no question at the board level, because it was that one little moment of proof, and they got to see it and go aha, and that was that was trust. it. Yeah, yeah, trust. Yeah, trust. You built trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one for me. I'm going to go way back in the way back machine, um, right before we launched the Anything brand. So this was summer 2009, and we had been doing all of this work and. Um, I want to bring these back someday. But we were doing all of this work. Everything was changing so quickly, and it was about a month before we were launching the brand, and we, we had rebranded from Rangeview Library District to Anything Libraries, and we were going to open the doors, and there's this orange doodle on the front, and it's like, oh, my God, are people going to totally freak out? I had a freak out moment, like, oh, my God, or, like, what's going to happen? Like, we were scared. It was a huge risk. And I had this moment of, are our staff are prepared to talk about this? change, right? And so we did what we called Anything Jam Sessions. And we went around and met with staff throughout the district, Pam, um, our director and I, and our former communications director, Steve Hansen. And we mixed them up. It was like with the peer groups, like so, um, so not necessarily by branch. Um, and we had these conversations and we asked, why do you work in a library? So like, what's your personal mission or what's your why and then um, if you were in the elevator with the governor like what w how would you describe anything so we talked about our personal elevator statements and then we provided you know the elevator statement that we had um, written and our staff had spoken so eloquently about what anything meant to them like they were so on board it like brings tears to my eyes to I'm a sappy gal. But like it brings tears to my eyes to think like that it had resonated. And they were so grateful to have those questions and have a chance to talk with each other and listen to each other and, and understand this is why we're in libraries together and this is where we're going and this is where we want to go next. So for me that was a that was a big one. Um, and, and we've had many and, and you know, lots of challenges too, but that was a big one. So, so mine, I would say, is that sometimes wins aren't a very specific uh, thing. They're over time seeing change. And that's kind of one thing that I would caution you is not to get discouraged too quickly. Um, you know, this year I just reported our year-end results um, on marketing to our board. And I was able to look year over year since I've been at the library for three years now, where we started and where we are now and how all of our traffic on our website has our traffic on our website has doubled our social media followers have more than doubled our awareness is well into the millions now where it was not before um, and so that's been a really gratifying win for me is to see that change over time but it didn't happen right away um, and so a win can be gradual and not just one, one specific thing. There's a whole other area of um, getting buy-in uh, in terms of building a team. I think you said you started, Jim, with one and a half people. Uh, how many now are in the marketing team? So um, we are now at, let's see, I guess nine? Nine people. Um, nine. Um, ten, I guess. Okay. Uh, but anyway, but it, it was a growth. I mean, it was growth over time. Um, you know, the first thing, the one and a half, first the half became a whole. Um, and then we added a graphic designer um, because, you know, I hit the limit of my abilities there really quickly. Um, and then, you know, then we added, then we added another writer, then we added another designer, then we had a social media person, like, specifically. And so it was just a little bit of a need at a time, but that gets back to that whole trust idea. Um, 
we kept showing that you know if you put some faith in us we will move something forward and so we were able to you know and fortunately we had the resources to do it right I mean um, you had to make that argument every time uh, but you know it's something was there and we could show that we were making a difference and by the way one of the ways um, if you're trying to make some of those arguments one of the best arguments in the world is well there's 32 people out in the branch doing this part-time and we can do it with one person here so we're actually going to save a lot of time and money um, that's I've used that argument over and over again I think I'm gonna write that yeah. one down yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, my organization right now, there's just two of us plus a part-time work-study student. Uh, but I really feel like we're poisoned. I was talking a lot with Stacy about how we're going to grow and looking. My, my favorite thing about libraries, one of my favorite things about libraries and working in libraries is being able to, to benefit from people who have been where you are and, and learn from their mistakes or their successes and apply them in your own environment. So I've been talking to Stacy about how we can look to grow. Um, our team as well because we're similar sized systems. Yeah, we already have like a laundry list of stuff that we can't wait to follow up on with each other. So awesome. It was good dinner the other night. Um, so there are five of us right now on our team. I was a part of a th the three person communications team when we when I started there. That was that was the first communications team they had had there and. Um, it was just a writer, designer, and director for a long, long time. Uh, now we have another designer, Neil, <laughs> one of our brilliant designers. Um, and we have, um, um, so all of them are creative leads, one with a focus on writing, uh, two designers, and then one with a focus on special projects who helps with events um, and program management, or project management, and a whole slew of other things. He's also our mascot, Dude the Squirrel. Um, and um, uh, in my new role, we're all, now that I'm in this new role, we're also going to be hiring an innovations manager. So I'll still be overseeing the department, but um, have a manager to kind of help coordinate the day-to-day. -day. So there will be six, I guess, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> We've come a long way. <laughs> So how do you also get buy-in for programs? So there's one thing you can build the team and so on, but like if you're wanting to do, because I know you all do things, you mentioned innovations, I'm sure you will do things that are creative and a little bit off the wall. What's your process for helping kind of like get to do additional marketing activities or new kind of programs around marketing? So, so our department is responsible for like high profile events that we do um, and any of the foundation events. So we do the backyard concert series and such, um, but we do a lot of collaboration. So, um, and some of it will be projects that we bring in through partnerships, partnerships or because we have created these relationships throughout the years and created these collaborations, we now have, and this is kind of an indicator for success in my mind too, is like um, staff coming to us now saying, okay, I wanna do this thing. Like, will innovations come help? Like, and that makes me so happy because it wasn't always like that, you know? And it's always something that you're trying to um, do. But really it's getting everybody around the table early you know, all of, all of the important players around the table early and ensuring that folks have a voice and that you're building ownership. Um, you know, there have been times throughout the past 10 years where we'd come in like steamrollers and we're like, okay, we're here, we're gonna put this thing on, you know, like, you know, always together, but not in the same kind of like integrated way that we do now where again, early on, coming together with the branch staff, the manager, talking about what, who's the audience, what do we want to do, what does success look like, um, and then really working together to create a fabulous event or program. So um, we're also responsible, um, we help coordinate all the district-wide programs, so we have a committee of staff from across the district, and the innovations team is on there too, and so we work together to define the district-wide programs for the year and then help roll that all out, and it's, so fun. Uh, it's a lot of work, but it's so fun, and it really does feel like there's a sense of ownership um, from all, all the different areas. Mm -hmm. You must have done a few new things in your three years 
What kind of stuff have you done that you needed to get buy-in? Well, I would say it's not exactly specific marketing projects, but I would say that our organization, we follow the philosophy of the seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, so we, an organization-wide, we always, we're, every year we adopt two wildly important goals. And from all the way down to facilities, all the way up to the executive director, we set a goal and we all work toward it. And we set it collaboratively, both from the top, it's not just top down. So like you were saying, steamroller, and this made me think of this. We're not just saying, this is our goal. We have a good idea from the leadership about what we think it should be, but we help every single level kind of come to terms, or not come to terms, but come together on what that wildly important goal should be. Uh, so, and then we identify that goal, and then every single person works on it. And that is, that's how we're buy getting buy-in without steamrolling things. Mm -hmm. So an example of this, um, we won the John Cotton Dana Award last year for our, um, which was ultimately from a wig, we call the wildly important goal a wig, uh, for pa uh, running an information-only campaign and educating over 100,000 people on the importance of the library of the future. So it wasn't a bond campaign to vote yes, because we couldn't do that, but it was a, here's what the library is right now, here's what it could be, here's what it wouldn't be if this wouldn't pass. Uh, and so we, we gathered everyone together um, on this ultimate goal, which was a, a marketing goal, you know, and we supplied the marketing pieces for it. Uh, but then every single employee had to be a part of that and had to be a part of sh sharing that message at whatever level they were at. Um, and I think I'm, I'm rambling now, but, but that's... <laughs> You're not. That's, no, not, no, 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 that's no. how we get buy-in from the ground yeah. up. And, and so we do that repeatedly. We, that was just one example of goal. So we would have, we'll have two, up to two goals, one goal at a time, but two goals a year that everyone rallies behind and feels invested in, and then works on a team-by-team -team basis about how they're going to achieve that goal. Um, and I mean, most of the goals are about marketing at their core. You know, it's about increasing circulation, getting the message out about the library, um, the library of the future. Um, they're all, it's all about, we're all marketers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, everything's about marketing at its core, right? Yeah. 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 It says three marketers. Yeah. <laughs> Full. Uh, four marketers, right, right. So uh, the, the only thing, I mean, all that made complete sense to me. Uh, the only thing I would add, um, and sometimes I think this is a function of our size and, and our geographic reach, but I think, um, I think it works in a lot of situations. We like to pilot things. Um, you know, we don't need to roll it out to all 32 branches at once. Um, so let's, you know, let's find... Let's find a way to start something, mm -hmm. tinker with it a little bit, make sure we get it right. Um, and then other folks can see that it works, and then they're, they're ready to buy into it. Um, so yeah, it's really hard to launch something, you know, I mean, I, I still can't believe that you guys just like launched a whole new library system. Um, it's amazing to <laughs> me. Me neither. Um, but yeah, but sometimes pieces and parts are kind of the easiest way to go about it. I think an important point that that you made me think of too, is being okay with a little bit of risk and being okay with a little bit of failure. So maybe if you're not investing a lot of money into something, like, you know, create a culture where it's okay to fail um, and learn from those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how common that is in any organization and maybe libraries too um, that are risk averse, but be okay with that. And as a leader, you know, make sure it's understood that, you know, taking a risk, the only way that you're gonna go move forward is by being okay to fail, fail once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. And to that point too, it's like, I love, you know, we, we do that quite a bit too. Like, okay, let's try it here, or let's try it this much, or, but it let, allows you some flexibility to experiment too, right? And yeah. just like you're saying, take those risks and, and maybe push things. Yeah. And so an example of a failure that I had pretty early on was we wanted to increase the number of card holders in, our wig was to increase the, increase the number of card holders in Spokane. And so my approach to that was to send a direct mail activated library card to a list of people that I had who didn't have library cards. I thought everybody was gonna immediately, you know, use their card, but I did a small sample size, uh, and it failed. Direct mail is not the best way to reach people. It, I mean, and I'll, I'll admit it failed, 
Uh, but I was, you know, I felt encouraged by my, you know, my support, my leadership team to do that. And then I just knew, like, okay, well, we won't, we won't try that again. Mm -hmm. Let's move on right. to something else, and we can learn from that and just get better. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you guys are working on now, looking forward, in terms of new projects? I know at dinner, Amanda said, I need to think bigger. So I'm like, <laughs> what did you come up with in the last two days? <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, I mean, the, the bigger thing that I, you're really asking me, um, the bigger thing that I'm thinking about now is how we can continue to drive Spokane forward um, by maybe even, we, we uh, let's see, these are very early thoughts, but uh, we have, you know, embedded business librarian who helps, uh, helps our uh, entrepreneurs in our community use our business resources. How could we do that with a marketing department? Maybe we need to think about that, how we could be, you know, nonprofit marketing consultants. So we're, we're, we're taking marketing outside of not just, rec, you know, recommending the library and marketing the library, but help make our businesses better in our community by being marketing experts. Thinking just outside the box about what we could do to teach people more about marketing. That's a great uh, idea. Those, those are very early thoughts. Yeah. I have my business card. Ask me again in a year. <laughs> I'm going to make sure it becomes the goal, okay. one of your wigs for next year. There you go. Well, we're at Midcontinent. Um, we are in the middle of a building renovation and, and new building program. Um, we we passed a levy in 2016, and so we are doing. 31 building projects, either renovations or new buildings, and we're trying to do it in six years. So that's what we're doing, um, and that's pretty much all we're doing. Um, but some of these new facilities, I like. It's kind of funny because sitting here talking about this, I realized like we need to start thinking now, because some of these new facilities, like one of our new branches, uh, it's kind of one of our regional libraries, is going to have. Um, the right kind of facility for, to encourage culinary literacy, and so that's a whole new program. We've you know we've got to be ready to take on, um, and it's you know it, we're still two to three years from that being reality. But yeah, it's like it's time to go and start thinking about it now. We're doing seven projects right now, and we're I can't believe you're doing thirty. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. I'm exhausted yeah. for yes. you. Yeah. <laughs> that's why but he's seen nothing it. of Nashville. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so uh, we have lots of fun projects going on, uh, but this is going to lead to a shameless plug. So there's your warning. Uh, one of our key uh, parts of our strategic plan is anything is town square. Um, so we believe that the library is the town square where people come together and they can have dialogues about important issues. Like I keep, I've said this a lot, you know, as part of this um, uh, experience that we've been providing here, the people are hungry to connect as human beings and to connect one-on-one. -on -one. And so we are working on ways to help facilitate that and provide those opportunities. So we've been doing a lot of programming. Um, we've partnered with um, Citizen University and we're um, doing these Civic Saturdays that use the rituals of faith-based organizations, but in a civic environment. Um, Citizen University out of Seattle, highly recommend looking them up. Um, so we've been hosting those um, coming up next month. Um, we're doing a Town Square 2020, which is actually a district-wide program of um, civic-inspired programming across the district. Um, and uh, we have voter registration kiosks that are now set up at some of our branches. We've been working with um, our Adams County elections on that. Um, and then a big census push this year, too, as Stacey Abrams was talking about. Um, and so, but really it's uh, helping people understand that they can come to the library for these things. Um, it's important as the anchor, as a, a, an important anchor in the community. Um, I'll also say too, we just actually lost two ballot initiatives this past two years. Um, we, we don't have plans right now to go back again this year, um, but uh, it's really important to be um, talking about these things in our libraries and having people come in. I mean, it, it's important whether you're going to ballot or not. I'm not saying that, but I think it's 
uh, critical to helping our in helping engage our community in these civic discussions because when it's time to call, mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure they understand how our community and how our government and how our civics work too. Um, that's a side note. So the other part of my shameless plug, if you don't understand, we're bringing this to life uh, at the Any Bubbler Town Square right now, um, which has been part of like, how do we take a little bit of how we're approaching this and bring it to PLA attendees. And so I highly recommend coming by at 1230 for our soapbox therapy sessions. And then we're having a giant sing along at 230. So, um, which is one of the aspects of Civic Saturday, people singing together and building community through that. So sorry, I had to. Anybody else want to plug anything? <laughs> <laughs> I just I have one more question, and then we will have time for uh, questions from the floor. Um, if you had one piece of advice, one sage piece of advice um, to give to the marketers in the audience, what would it be? I I've guess, stumped them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think really oh, sage of advice. I think it comes down to authenticity, like just, you know, um, knowing your why, being able to communicate that to our staff, who then communicate that to our customers and doing it in a real way, you know, know it, knowing what you're, who you are as an organization, um, everything comes from that. The rest are tools, right? You know, um, we have all kinds of strategies for how we tell our story, but do we know what, who we are at our core? You know, I think that, um, I mean, that's a big philosophical question for anyone, but I think, I think everything stems from that. Yeah. And I think under, understand, even if you don't do a wildly important goal, understand what your director's goal is or your le other leadership's goals are and make a strategy and a plan for, the, for how you can impact that in marketing and how, what data you will show to show your impact. Mm -hmm. And I think sort of tying it back around to buy-in again. Um, I think the main thing is just to remember that we're in a people business. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, not to let your plans and goals get out ahead of the relationships that you need to maintain uh, to be able to achieve those goals. Um, you know, I would say the more time you spend investing in your relationships with the other folks in your organization, the more likely you're going to be to succeed. Mm -hmm. Very true. All right. Welcome. Well, sadly, we're out of time. I think we could keep going all day, um, but I just want to thank our panelists. I feel like I've learned a lot from you, not just today, but over dinner. <laughs>